Yes, yes, I can see it. Well, Christian, the floor is yours. Please uh, introduce yourself and welcome. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. My name is uh, Christian. I'm director of libraries and citizen services in uh, Roskilde municipality. Roskilde is uh, a municipality with around 90,000 people, uh, 30 kilometers outside of Copenhagen, where I live. Um, and I love libraries very much. Uh, and for most of my career, I've been very interested in how we talk about libraries uh, and more specific, specific how we talk about the impact and the value uh, and the effect that library brings to individuals uh, and to communities. And so for the last year or so, we've been working on, on this study uh, that we have put out. Um, and and it, it, uh, I've been, I think this is my you know, session number 93 or something about it uh, <laughs> from all over the world. It, it created a lot of interest. And I'm obviously very happy about that because it's, for me, it's very important you know, to be aware of um, how we talk about things. Um, but also because I want, the, I mean, this study is not just, this study is not the truth about the impact of libraries and it's not going to change how we talk in itself. It's, it's the amount of inside studies, discussions that are going to maybe change the way that not only library professionals talk about and look at the impact of libraries, but also very important how politicians, decision makers and citizens, uh, you know, observe and look at libraries and how they can, you know, provide value to, uh, to communities. So that was a kind of introduction. Do you want me just to proceed or do you have something else, Daniela? Well, Jeske, it is a big group, so we does just proceed, or do you want to do an introduction round? Oh yeah. Um, um, now maybe we just proceed. I think. Yeah, we'll just proceed, Christian, because it's a big group, and we want to spend all the time we have this morning on uh, the impact compass. So please uh, proceed. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. I was looking forward to all the, you know, the dots oh. naming is, is, oh. is so... Oh, uh, then we'll do an introduction route. Oké, okay, so, uh, uh, ik ga maken een ronde en dan noem ik even je naam en dan kun je aangeven je naam, uh, je functie en de plaats waar je bibliotheek zich bevindt. Het liefst in Engels en anders in Nederlands en dan vertaal ik het voor je. Uh, Marjan Middelkoop. Marjan Middelkoop, advisor for libraries. Mm -hmm. Kate Seger. <laughs> Sorry, Christian. And, and former library director. <laughs> <laughs> and which library, Marjan? Um, I was, I've been a uh, director for Eindhoven and Dommeldal. <laughs> okay, Kate Segers. Yeah, that's, that's not Kate. Kate is my daughter. Oh. Uh, my name is uh, Larissa <laughs> van Dommelen. <laughs> it's uh, apparently the team session of my daughter and she's called Kate. Uh, I'm a librarian at the North Oost Brabantse Bibliotheek and I'm also responsible for uh, all the impact uh, studies at our library. Thank you. Sorry for the confusion. Pieter Nel Thijssen. Hello, I'm uh, Pieter Nel Thijs. I'm manager at the Public Library of Tilburg in the south of Holland. Um, and together with Jessica, I did the, the study for impact management. So I'm very, very happy that uh, you can help us this morning to tell everything about uh, uh, your process. Jaap Naber. Yep, Jaap Naber, business controller for the Library of Rotterdam. Uh, my aim is to introduce impact measurement, impact management in the coming years in our huge library. Sounds like a cool job. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Yeah, Marjolein. That links under the line. Marjolein Omens. Hi, Christian. I'm Marjolein. We've been in touch uh, via email. I work at the KB as a knowledge advisor. And uh, I'm currently qu quarantined with my kids, so uh, I'll quickly switch off the microphone. <laughs> nice to meet Marjolein you. Has her kids, uh, I also have kids at home right now. <laughs> <laughs> Rita Bemelmans. Good morning to all. I'm uh, Rita Bemelmans. I'm working as a library manager in the surroundings of Eindhoven called Dommeldal. 
Doreen Ballemans. Hello, I'm Doreen Ballemans. Ik hoor je heel slecht, Doreen. Heeft iedereen dat? Ja. Uh, I'll try again. Ja, yeah, gaat beter zo, ja. Ik ben Doreen Ballemans. Ik ben een vijf of luidertjes. En mijn collega is Marjan Middelkamp. En mijn nieuwe collega is de tussen part of this week. Dus ik wil je also in advice of research. Zo de Welkom, Doreen. Dank je. Oké, even kijken, want af en toe husselen ze bij mij. Sandra Musters. Hi, I'm Sandra. Uh, I'm working at the Library of uh, West Brabant. Uh, and I'm doing research and uh, marketing for this library. Dank je wel. Meer and also, oh. <laughs> sorry, and also working for Take 5, uh, uh, the library around uh, Oosterhout. Thank you. Meerte Rense. Good morning. I'm Meerte. I work at the library in Rotterdam as well as just like, uh, yeah. And I'm an advisor, basic skills. That's what they, what I literally translated. I don't know if that's the correct term. Dilke de Goede. Hello, Dilke de Goede. Uh, I work at the Public Library of Kampen. Um, I'm head of the department of education and uh, children, 1 to 18 years. Thank you. Lauri de Zwart, she's also a member Christian of our uh, support team for the impact community uh, well, management project. Lauri de Zwart. Good morning. Um, I'm Lauri and I work for for libraries in the east of the Netherlands and I'm in the train so I will put off my microphone and um, <laughs> camera and put on my mouth mask. <laughs> Thank you Lauri. Also for the image uh, in the train in the Netherlands. Uh, um, I also saw Jolijn. She's also a member of our support group for this project, uh, Christian. Jolijn. Hi, uh, I'm Jolijn. Uh, I work for Provideo. Uh, we work for uh, libraries in the north of Holland, and I'm a researcher. Theo van den Broek. Theo van den Broek. My microphone is on now. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I'm visual now. Okay, good morning. We can see you. <laughs> just uh, enjoyed my breakfast and my newspaper, and uh, I'm working <laughs> so with the library uh, Dommeldal near Eindhoven. We have an, uh, an impact day planned, so we're all watching this. Uh, and I'm working for all kinds of aspects of education from uh, children to adults. Thank you. Thank nice you. meeting you. Newspaper, breakfast and impact measurement. It's a perfect morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Without children, I hope <laughs> Maaike Koistra. Good morning, I'm Maaike Koistra and I'm the marketeer of the uh, library in Emmen. Thank you. Okay, Jessica, now I need your help because uh, I cannot see the rest. Okay, uh, I think um, we didn't have Miriam. Mer Miriam Frankort. Yeah, yes. Yes, um, I'm uh, uh, part of the management team of the uh, library of Kerkrade. Just won the nomination of uh, just won best library of uh, the Netherlands 2021. And um, one, the, one of the things I'm responsible for is the computers. So it is very strange that my camera doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Miriam. Uh, um, um, we still have Karin. Yeah, Karin Meijerman. I'm the director of the library in Drachten in the north of the Netherlands. Thank you, Karin. Mm. And now, do we have do we have anyone who did, didn't introduce himself yet? Yeah. Karin Nijboer. Mm -hmm. 
Sorry. Uh, and good morning to you all. Good morning, Christian. I'm Arjen Nijp, we're program manager at uh, uh, the, the BIP, the, the library in uh, Leeuwarden, in Friesland. Nice meeting you. Okay. Welcome. Hi, Arjen. <laughs> Hello. Good morning here. I'm Hilly, also from Friesland. So I thought after Karin and Arjen, that would be a nice introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm a board advisor at FERS, and that's the um, service organization from the Friesian Libraries. Okay, thank you, Erin. Anybody else who didn't introduce themselves? No? No. Okay, so Christian is going to, well, tell about the Impact Compass. If you have questions, you can uh, well ask them in the chat. And if you have a direct question, you just raise the hand. You'll find it on top of your Teams display. And uh, well, we can translate it or you can ask your question in English. And Christian, his story will be in English. Is there anything you don't understand? Please let me know and then I will translate it for you. Well, enjoy Christian his... Uh, presentation about the impact compass thank you thank you everybody uh, and nice with the introduction um <clears throat> that the agenda in short will be i will start telling a little bit about the ambition about this work we have do, been doing where is it coming from why have we even been been motivated to carry it out then i will be looking into the the method and you know the, the scaffold that we have built the data that we have been built around the the study uh, including the the impact compass uh, then I'll be talking a little bit about the main results that we, we, we got from it. And then at the end, um, how we have been using those results and the perspectives of this kind of work when we, you know, are going from this research and actually out into the world and talk about this. And I would like to um, start with a little story about actually about impact or uh, different ways to been looking at the effect of the work that libraries are doing. When I was 17 years old, I lived in, in Jutland in, uh, in Denmark with my parents uh, in a small town called Hornslet. Uh, and my little brother and we had a dog and I went to gymnasium and my, I think I was kind of a regular young man, teenager, and my window to the you know outside world was kind of framed with one yearly trip with my parents down south to, you know, some beach and some sun, went to Turkey and Bulgaria and places like that uh, for, for two weeks every year. And, and I just remember it being nice, you know, sun, water, a lot of French fries. And, um, and then the, the other thing was I, I went to Aarhus, which was like, the, it's the second biggest city in, in, in Denmark. It's really small, actually, but but it's the second big city in Denmark. And that was like the big city. And I was like exploring that that part when, when you are young and you want to, you know, kind of go a little bit away from, from the, the, the small town that, that you live in. Then one day I, um, I was at the, the local public library in Hornslet and I saw this book display uh, and there was this title that kind of caught my eyes. Uh, and it was a book from a Danish author called Carsten Jensen. And the book was called, translated into English, I Have Seen the World Begin. I actually have it here. In, in, uh, it's, a, it's a big one. It's in, for, for, borrowed from the library. Um, and it kind of struck my interest. Uh, there was something about the title and the display was about, you know, exploring the world and traveling and stuff like that. So I bought the book from the library and took it home and I read it kind of quickly over some few days and it was like kind of a amazing reading experience it was like getting a baseball bat right in the face and at the same time getting wings and flying off to you know you know distant shores and it kind of poked two things in me the one was kind of you know adventurous and and wanderlust uh, and and I I wanted to see the world I was reading and I was saying, I'm sitting here in my little room. I, I want to I want to travel. I want to move out. And I the next day I applied for different jobs and I started saving monies. And right after the gymnasium was finished, I I just started traveling with friends and alone. And I traveled for the next three years until I applied for library school. And I, I wouldn't say that that book changed my life, but 
it kind of had a huge impact on me uh, in, in that period of of, uh, of my life. The, the book is about Carsten Jensen traveling when he was a young man, almost my age at that point, and, and just he's just describing the, the different parts of the world he's looking very taking and it's very inspiring. So that is one story about library impact. And another story is also about the book. And it's about that I checked out this book one time from the public library. So that is one one in the statistics. That is one on the lending numbers. Maybe 19 other people borrowed the title that year. So it would be 20 uh, in the library statistics of the municipality. So that is also an important number that, you know, collectively that, that points into how many items are, are that library system, you know, checking out every year. But that is two different stories, two very different stories. What is interesting to Danish context is that it's the last story that takes up the most time and most energy and most scope of the discussion. We are using 90% of our time when we talk about impact and effect of libraries, talking about lending numbers and talking about foot traffic and different kind of key figures, key figures that are extremely important, but doesn't, you know, capture the, 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 the effect that reading that book had on me as a young man. And of course, you could say that it was not the library that, you know, provided that experience because it was not the library who wrote the book. It was Carsten Jensen who wrote the book. But I was 17 years old. I had like zero money, no money at all. I was extremely, you know, I didn't have any money. I didn't have any job. I didn't have anything. I just had my, you know, my parents giving me clothes and food. And so I wouldn't have bought this book, I'm pretty sure. That is one thing. So the free and equal access to cultural experiences kicks in at this point. The other point is that it was, you know, promoted to me through a display. Some, some, some library workers at this library has put time into promoting these this kind of different titles so it struck me and i wanted to borrow it and i wanted to read it so so i very much take the library into you know credibility for actually making me reading this book and and giving me these thoughts about you know life and the world and all these kind of things but my main point is that uh, sadly at, at some point it's the key figures that is taking up the discussion about where libraries are going and how they are actually coping in communities in Denmark. I'm not really sure about how it is in Holland. And basically that is the reason why we took up this thing. We wanted to change, you know, we wanted to expand the understanding and the language on how we talk about how public libraries affect and have an impact and brings value to both individuals and communities in Denmark. So I hope this personal anecdote makes sense to you in some part. It's 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 striking to me how 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 much time we use talking about the numbers and how little time we use talking about the impact the actual impact and value of public libraries in Denmark. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Is it shared with you now? Hopefully it is. Yes, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Great. Um, and 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 I, I I think I brought this to me all my life, especially working with libraries, thinking about why is why is why are we talking about libraries in the sense that we are talking about libraries, and couldn't it be more valuable for everybody, both citizens, politicians, and library professionals, to actually have another room, building on some not just stories, because I just told you a story that is just one story out of many, but actually have some some methods and a logic and some empirical data. To, to to build on and, and having a different discussion, moving a little bit away from foot traveling and lending numbers. And how do we talk about public libraries in, in Europe, in Denmark and, and around? I, 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 there's, there's different voices in it. This is, I, I took it, an English title, but this is, this is very common in, in Denmark. Uh, it can be positive and negative. Library footfall down 80% on last year. Uh, from a, a British newspaper, um, could be also be, be be going up. Coronavirus library see surge in ebook borrowing during lockdown because the physical collections are and buildings are closed down. It's titles and headlines that say something about the use of libraries, and like like you know lending numbers, foot traffic. Uh, every year when the library statistics comes out in Denmark, 
these these headlines are flowing around both on locally but also on nationally. If they go down, the libraries are in a big crisis. If they go up, sometimes it creates some discussion about our libraries. If foot traffic goes up, sometimes I've seen that it's creating a discussion about why don't they lend out more books? Libraries are about books, not about people and stuff like that. Um, but it, but it's it's kind of it's kind of the arena in which most of the discussion about impact of libraries are going on in Denmark, and it's it's important. It's very important to track and use and be aware of the use of libraries. But it's not the full picture. Then there is another uh, arena, and that is the personal one. I told you a personal story this morning, and a lot of politicians, uh, people of voices of culture, and and these kind of people are you know. Are creating headlines and are making you know debates about the role and the legitimacy about the public libraries. This is a guy from from West Midlands in boroughs in, uh, in in Great Britain who says, "Do we really need it?" Council leader question library service after months of closures. Uh, this is a different take on it. On Crystal Whittles, why lockdown was the plot twist that libraries needed. And I think this is extremely positive, no matter the, the, the opinion of people. You know, if, if nobody wanted to debate the public library, uh, it would be a, you know, an indicator that we were insignificant as an institution. But in Denmark, there's a high degree of persons who want to debate. It could be authors, people of culture, politicians, sometimes also citizens, and, and sometimes also library professionals. But it is, you know, it is, it is personal perspectives on the public libraries. It's it's hard to take that personal perspective that could be of a a politician or an author or a library professional and actually say that that is you know that is that is impact that is effect. It's it's personal experiences for most part. Um, and we wanted to you know we wanted to come away from that. We wanted to put the very single things that actually mean something to libraries the citizens and the communities that we serve at the center of the discussion of the impact of public libraries. So this is a boy, a Danish boy on 13 years old, talking about why he goes to his public library. And he says, I come by here to check wherever everyone I know is around. I come here every day instead of going home to an empty house. So if this boy on 13 years old are using his library, he's walking in and outside the doors like 150 times a year that is 150 to the statistics that is a nice number it's it's a, it's a lot of use of the library building but that number really doesn't say anything about what he's expressing in this quote when he talks about the use of library he's indicating something about you know an empty house being alone something like that and he he, he feels some kind of togetherness or connection or belonging or you know connection to somebody else by going into that building. You can't grasp that from the statistics. So we wanted to take that and kind of expand it and, and put a, a method around it and, and get some data and from that actually, you know, expand the the, the, the vision and the, the, the insight of what, what libraries means to people. And, you know, in, in Denmark, very much, it, we, we don't use the term new public management that much anymore. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it, but it has a, to my opinion, a huge, a huge effect on the way that we talk and think about things still. New public management is about, if you can, it's about many things, but basically it's about if you can measure it, if you can weight it, if you can count it, then it has value. Everything else is just something that we can talk about. And I, I, I found library statistics, I found library data and data in general to be of great interest of what we do. And I use a lot of these things in my work. But the thing is, it's not the full picture. We can't see the full picture from the spreadsheet. We can't see the full picture of the number because we are in an industry that affects people on different levels that things that could be counts. So we wanted to, you know, expand that picture, expand the language of the impact of public libraries. And library statistics say something about use, which is important, but it does not necessarily say something about the value of public libraries or libraries in general. And, and our ambition was to change that language, at least in Denmark. And by changing, I mean not only how library professional talks about it, but how we talk about it in Denmark. 
how politicians and decision makers and, and citizens are talking about public libraries, not only as being houses with books where you walk in the door, take some books and walk outside again, but actually what that institution brings to people and to societies. So that was, you know, the, the core ambition of, of, of this study. Um, something about the method and design and also the impact compass. I, I, I use some time, every time I talk about it to, you know, many people are interested in the results, but I think it's significant to talk about the method that we use to actually be critical and understand the results that has come out from here. The results are good news to libraries. I, I'm totally aware of that, at, at least to my opinion. But, but if you just go around and talk about them in that sense without being aware of the method and design pointing to those findings, I, I think we are not being critical enough about the impact of our public libraries. So I'll, I'll talk you know, something about that now and where, where it comes from and how we put it together. Um, we have taken a lot of you know, um, in, inspiration from the Cultural Value Project, which is a British study from 2016. And they kind of wanted to aim at the same as we wanted to aim at. They realized that very often in impact studies on culture, you were starting with, uh, for instance, art in urban spaces. We are creating city art, uh, you know, murals at walls and and sculptures and you know different kind of things that people can can meet in in the urban spaces and then they are kind of quickly jumping to some conclusion that goes about art in urban spaces are good for tourism for instance and and most of these impact studies are missing the important part in the middle the actual citizens the actual people that are meeting that they are bridging over that part and the impact, the, the cultural value project wanted to, you know, take that, taking one people, two people, three people, four people and taking their experience with meeting cultural and art and then grow out from there. And, and we thought that was extremely inspiring and it was aiming at what we wanted to do with, with our study of the impact of public libraries in Denmark. So. The full, full name of the study is Understanding the Value and Impacts of Cultural Experiences uh, from Arts Council in England. And I would really recommend reading it or going over it. It's extremely experience, uh, even though it's five years old now, I think it's extremely valid still. And it's kind of a, it's kind of a meta study of 50 other studies on cultural impact. Um, and what they are, you know, what they are, what they are finding from looking at these 50 different studies on the impact of culture and art is that when individuals meet culture and art, it brings on four dimension of impact. And we thought those four dimension was extremely interesting. So, and we thought not only interesting, but we thought this is, maybe it's not the truth truth, but it's, it's valid. Somebody has been doing a great amount of work all already and and there's no reason that we we reinvent you know the deep deep plate again so so we 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 thought this is this is kind of solid methodology work and we want to build from this into this study so we, we wanted to use this as a scaffold and and what it shows is that when we as individuals are meeting culture and art it has four dimensions of impact for us there's an emotional impact an intellectual impact a creative impact and a social impact. And I could give an example that is not, uh, not about libraries, just to kind of frame it. Uh, Daniela, do you want to go to a concert with me? It's a question. Not in real life, just we are just playing. Oh, we're oh, just playing, yes, yes. yes. Okay, I'll go thank to you. Concert. If it was real life, you would say no. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, I, I, will, I would recommend that we will go to see a nook uh, the Dutch uh, uh, singer, an artist, uh, and and experience that we were going to this concert at some place to watch Anouk. I'm I'm pretty sure because she was huge when I was kind of a teenager, or maybe a little bit older. I can remember, and she had this gigantic hit about nobody's wife. I don't know if you remember it. So I would stay in this concert, and hopefully she would play that number. And what it would bring to me emotional is nostalgic. You know, it would be taking me back to my younger years 
and when you know we were going to parties and dancing and listening to this number i can still remember the 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 music video and i had i also remember i had a little bit of cross on her and so i remember the, the, it would it would take me back and bring 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 back some emotions you know uh, and Daniela might have a, a different approach to her, and I'm pretty sure I will also bring something to her. Meeting with culture and art awakens something in us. Otherwise, it's insignificant. It awakens something in us. Then there's also an intellectual dimension. Nobody wife as a number is is about women being independent. And 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 I think I mean that is not, that is not a new thing. A new thing. Maybe it was a little bit back then. Uh, it could make us, you know, think about. Now I'm not a woman, but but uh, but I'm very interested in how our society works when when it comes to independence between sexes and different kind of things. Uh, so it it could make me on an intellectual level think about how things are in Denmark or in my near surroundings or how things actually are going in the world when it comes to you know being independent independent individuals. Then there is a creative dimension at the impact. Maybe, I mean. When I was young, I, I used to play a lot of music. Sadly, I kind of lost it in, in business of libraries and family and stuff like that. But maybe I was just standing there and thought, I, I want to take up my bass again and want to play. It's amazing to stand at a stage and play for people. And it, it, it could be that Daniela is not playing an instrument, but maybe she has been singing when she was younger. And she said, wow, I want to take up singing again. So it creates, you know, it, 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 it takes us, it motivates us to take out new things when we meet art and culture. You could see a painting and you want to go paint yourself, or you could read a book and you want to go traveling. It, 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 it sparks something in us that, that, that was not there before. And then there's a huge social dimension in everything when we meet about culture. Daniela would probably go to work the next day and talk about the concerts uh, to some colleagues over the coffee machine. And somebody there would say, oh, I saw her last year. It was amazing or it was really bad or something like that. Culture is something that we share together. It's something that brings us together. It's a, it could also be on a different level. You are just standing there. Maybe me and Daniela are getting lost in the crowd from each other, but you're still standing there. You're, you're not around somebody that you know, but you still feel this togetherness in this concert because you are sharing these experiences with a lot of strangers that you don't know, but you are sharing this experience and that brings us as a kind of belonging and togetherness. So that was just, I hope it makes sense. <laughs> it was just an example of how, how, how going to a museum, reading a book, going to a library talk, talking to a librarian, uh, going to a concert, listening to some music or something else, are, you know, are creating different kinds of impact to people. So that was kind of our impact scaffold for, for this. We, we were building from this. And then we have the ambition to start with the individual experiences. And then we collect the data on both quantitative and a qualitative level. And the data was a survey, a representative survey, as we call it in Denmark, on 1,509 different people from a random sample put up between 16 years old and, and, and up. Um, both men and women and so on, and both people who was using the library and people who don't use the library. It was very important for us to also grasp some insights from people who are not using a library specifically, because they can also have an opinion of, of, of thinking about the impact of value of libraries in, 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 uh, in societies. And for them, you know, the statistics only points at the actual use, but libraries, to my take, can also affect communities and society, the people who are not using them. So we wanted to, to talk with those two. Um, and we had, we had used a lot of time, you know, putting together the questionnaire to grasp this. I come to, back to that in a minute. And then we had a qualitative part on the data, which was 30 observation studies and interviews on locations on two different libraries, a bigger library and a smaller branch libraries, because we had the thing that was there was a difference between, you know, the, the, the biggest city head libraries and then smaller brains libraries in, in smaller communities. There could be some, some differences there. So, and we, we, we did some, some qualitative data collection uh, to, to both to test the, the quantitative part uh, against some qualitative insights, but also to, to, to bring out some, some extra volume at some extra levels to, uh, to the quantitative part. Um, so very importantly, Doing the survey and the questionnaire to the citizens in Denmark, 
uh, we were talking a lot about what is a library to citizens. Because as a library professionals, we have deep insights on what a library is. And a library is a lot of things in 2021. Uh, but we realized that we couldn't just go out and talk to citizens about anything that we wanted to, you know, explore. I'm very interested in, you know, the the value of of the collaboration that public libraries has with schools and the effect it has on children's, you know, ability and and joy for reading. But and I really wanted to, you know, to frame that and, and go into that, but we realized that we couldn't do a questionnaire to regular people talking about library school collaboration because most of them wouldn't have any insights about it. It wouldn't be valid data. So what we decided in the end was to start with what we could call the traditional library. And the traditional library is somebody as something that most people know. So we wanted to talk to citizens about the impact and value of the collection that both the physical and digital collection of a library the programs that libraries do, uh, book talks, author talks, workshops, and so on. The physical, um, the physical uh, surroundings of a library, the study spaces, the, the cafe, uh, the collections uh, set up, and all these kind of things, the building in itself. Um, and then at the end, very important, we wanted to kind of look at the impact, effect, and value of the meeting with library workers. If you look at literature and impact studies, at least in Danish context, that is something that we have never talked about. What does it actually mean to for people to, to be able to get help from a library worker at a library or outside a library? We, we don't talk about that. It's extremely important. It, it Maybe that's between 60 or 70 percent of many librarians and library workers work. It, it's been at a, at, a, at a floor, at a counter, in a library, meeting people, helping them. What does it actually mean to people? Does it mean, and it's it's a huge part of our budgets too. It's a huge part of our, our training and and our skill development and all these kind of things. It, the, the 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 people that we have at libraries are the most important asset to me. Without our employees, it will only be you know buildings with books in it, and that is not libraries to me. So we wanted to explore that too. So that are the, the four things that we have been talking to people about, and of course we have not been talking about. <laughs> What is the impact of the collection for you? We have been, you know, building around the the scaffold of the of the cultural uh, value project and and doing it from there. And then we created the impact compass, uh, which is a way to uh, visualize and talk about and understand the 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 value and the impact that uh, public libraries uh, has to citizens in Denmark. Uh, and you can see it's a build around uh, the, 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 the four main dimensions of impact that our study shows that. Christian, uh, yeah. yeah. We have we one have question. Sure thing. From uh, Maria. Oh, yeah. Um, I was wondering uh, guidance in Danish libraries. Uh, what do you mean? What type of guidance do you give in uh, Denmark? Guidance uh, concerning the. Um, the, the the library itself or societal uh, issues as well? Um. Yes, good question. Uh, thank you for this. Uh, it's the situation seen from a citizen's perspective is that you walk into a library and you ask somebody who works there a question to get guidance. It could be at a front desk. It could also be our phone or via email, but you ask some employees about something and I, I come back to what it means to people, um, because in Denmark, you can, I mean, the understanding of what you can use a public library for is kind of big, but but what it shows was that people were very, very happy and it has a significant impact for them to get help to, you know, to readings and to subjects. I need mm -hmm. to write a paper on fishing. Can you help me find some resources? Or I just, you know, wanted to get some notes on playing ukulele because I just started it. Could you help get me some notes on playing ukulele? Uh, I just want to read a good book. And yesterday I was reading a, a book about Umberto Eco. Could you give me something familiar with that? I'm going to vacation. I need something light literature. Could you get me some 
some some crime fiction or something like that. Mm-hmm. That, that is that, that is the kind of but it could be many things, but but it kind okay. of shows some significance about literature and, and subjects really. Okay. In Holland, we are brightening, uh, we have a, a broader scope these days than a few years ago when providing guidance. But thank you for now. <laughs> this, we, we also have that in Denmark. We are also not just, we are not just standing waiting at, 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 at front desk for mm-hmm. citizens to come. We collaborate with schools and, and youth institutions to leave our libraries and, and provide guidance uh, at the schools and out in societies. But as I mentioned before, we didn't thought we could talk about it that to, 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 to real people who wouldn't, you know, if you don't have kids that goes to school, it was hard to, for us to talk about guidance in schools yeah. uh, on reading tips. So, so we, we were afraid that even though it was interesting for us, we were afraid that the data would not be valid if we started talking to normal citizens about that. And then also we thought, I forgot to mention that, if if this was, we didn't know what we were walking into when we did this. Maybe it was a huge failure uh, on the method, on the data, uh, just in general, you know. So, but we thought to ourselves, if, if this method kind of works to some extent, then we can always make new studies focusing on, you know, more specific parts of the library. It could be, you know, the collaboration with schools uh, or youth institution, or it could be, the digital library or something like that. So, mm-hmm. so that is, you know, that is why we went about it as as we did. Thanks. Yeah, also has a question. Yes. Yeah, maybe on top of uh, what has been said before, we work a lot with volunteers. Uh, does your study also include the guidance given by volunteers? Because, for example, in our place in in Rotterdam. We have more volunteers than actually we have libra- librarians. So, does it make a distinction between volunteers and actual uh, uh, librarians, or is just your study uh, uh, centered around, gu- around guidance as a whole? That, no, that is a good question, but there's no distinction because the tradition mm-hmm. of using volunteers for actually guidance in Denmark is not very strong. We use volunteers, but not as front personnel that per se, but there's no distinction between, you know, in in Denmark, I mean, for people walking into a library, they don't see librarians or library assistants or, or you young people putting up books on the shelves. They see somebody that can help help them. So so we get a we get a lot of question going to uh, to, to to our young people uh, assisting on, on putting books on shelf who is walking around the libraries with a book trolley. You know, it's very visible that you're working there when you have a book trolley in front of you. So, so, but so there's no distinction between that per se. But, and 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 there's no uh, volunteers has not been a part of, of, of the study in in the guidance part because it's it's and I don't think we thought that much about it. But it's it's not a we don't we don't have the same setup in Denmark as I can understand you have in in Holland. But if if you wanted to proceed and on, on adapting some of this method. And you actually wanted to look at guidance uh, on a national level in in, in Holland, or, or more specifically on on a municipality, a local level. It would be it would be obvious to uh, to look into to the distinction between volunteers and and library workers. If 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 if, if that was if that actually is is a, a huge thing, which I can understand on you that it is. And and that is also a basic point about this, this study. We. We really wanted to. We really wanted to make. I come back to it a bit later. We wanted to be able to adapt it into different situation. We wanted it be able for for you to say that is fine, but that is a Danish study, and I need when I look at guidance, I need to to also take into account that half of our half of the people, whatever that 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 our citizen meets, are volunteers. So. So, so hopefully we have, have been good enough as actually making it adaptable. So you can take some of it and put it into your own context, and 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 get something useful insights on, on the impact of that uh, into it. Hope hope it makes me. Any more questions before I move on? All right. No questions? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Otherwise, otherwise, just say so. So, 
as I was saying, we were creating the impact compass uh, on the on the built around uh, the scaffold of the of of the cultural value project, uh, and then translated into the, the the main impact dimensions that that we got from our data. And and I will come back to that in just a second. But as you can see, it's sur it's, it's surrounding about the library as a haven to citizens, around the library as a place where you get perspective on your life, uh, uh, the library as a place that impact your creativity and your inspiration and your urge to do new things, and a, the public library as a place that fosters stronger community and togetherness. And, and what you can see when that is in the broad, then you can see this is the impact compass of the guidance. Uh, we connected that with the four, four, four activities on the, the traditional kind of public library that we have been investigating. And so you can go into uh, and looking at uh, how much does the different parts uh, impact the citizens of, of De in Denmark in, 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 in 12 more nuanced um, perspectives and you could say uh, if that's if it, it's a bit hard to talk about it when it's you know when it's a virtual because i can't point at it actually we should be in a room and i should have it on a physical board and we could all we could all you know point at it and stuff like that um so i hope it makes sense uh, when i talk about it this way uh, what you can see on the impact compass of guidance uh, of library workers when citizens meet us is for instance that uh, in the perspective dimension, uh, impact dimension, it kind of, kind of, kind of high impact on that the meeting with library workers expands the horizons through new knowledge and information. Also, that it stimulates reflection or provides food for thought to actually have a conversation and get help and guidance from a library uh, worker. That is in the uh, perspective dimension. You could also look in the the community dimension um, that. It stimulates conversations. There is there is a familiar, uh, for some people, a connection with with meeting uh, library workers at a library and actually talk to them and get some help from them. So th th that 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 gives some different layers and different insights to the the the, the different parts of of uh, of the perspectives and the the, the impact dimensions that. Um, that the, the library has, and this is on guidance, and we have like impact compasses on a lot of different things. Um, it's very important for me to say that for me, this is not the truth about you know the impact of the public library to people in Denmark. This is a this is this is some empirical data visualized, and then it's um, then it's a way to foster a conversation, a language. A logic and some insights when you talk about uh, what public libraries means to people in Denmark. And if you if you if you, you can you can counter it to the statistics. The statistics shows numbers. If you if you if you if you counter st statistics on how many people have talked to library workers in your library system within a year, that is some numbers. And maybe you also have some different aspects on what have they been, you know, asking about. That is something very different than that. that what what this kind of study shows that okay, being being able to walk into a library in our community, and talking to a library professional someplace at the library actually expands the horizons for new knowledge and information to our citizens in this municipality. So it brings on some some difference. Uh, insights uh, on it, and you know, all the on the impact compasses look differently because it's 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 different thing we've been talking into. And if we did did the same study today, after we've been changing some services and all these kind of things, it will also show that 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 things are different. So this is also a way to actually be able to 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 give to library managers and library workers what kind of impact and value do we want to promote in our community? Do we it could be on, more, on a more local level. It could be on okay. We have a program about uh, traveling. Uh, what do we want that program to do? Do we want it to be like a haven, or do we want it to foster community, 
or do we want to create some perspective on life? So it's also, before you do things, a way for us to to be more sharp on what kind of impact do we want to, you know, give to our communities and to our citizens. So I hope it makes sense. It's, you know, I, I'm aware of, I always find it a bit hard to talk about the impact compass when it's in a virtual uh, setting, but uh, but I, I hope it kind of makes sense for you when I talk about it in a way. Otherwise, we can come back to it uh, in the end. I have four uh, main um, findings from the study. Uh, there's a lot of findings, and a, a lot of what are different uh, levels of findings. And then I have two more that goes across everything that I find significant that I will just share to you. So on an overall level across, you know, programs, collection, guidance, the physical library room, for the citizens in Denmark, the public library is a haven in everyday life where citizens find room for consummation and take time for themselves and each other. It's kind of like a third room, you could say, which also is described other places in, in, in library literature and, and elsewhere. We all have our private life. We have our, our home, maybe some family, friends, something like that. Then we have a different room, most of us. It could be work. Uh, it could be study or something like that. In between that, the public libraries for the citizen Denmark serves as a haven in everyday life. It's a place where there is no not the same obligation as a, at, at a home. There is not, uh, you, have, you don't have to clean it, clean up. You don't have to do the dishes. Uh, you don't have to be at work and answering emails and go to meetings. It's a place in between that take time for emission and togetherness and and be a part of society really and where you can take time for yourself just sit and be or you, you can use it with, with somebody else it could be your family your kids your study group your friends or something like that so it's a it's a haven in in communities for for, for for the citizens in denmark then the public library to the people in denmark is a critical communicator of knowledge and it gives citizens enlightenment and a critical perspective on life and i've, I've found I mean, it's really kind of, when you think about it, kind of old school. This is really the core of why we have public libraries in Europe. It's to bring enlightenment and to have critical perspective of life. It's going actually back to when we have, you know, the king and the church, which were, you know, the, the two big things. That was that was the, the, the towers of the truth. And, 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 and the enlightenment way want to, you know, raise the, the, the communities and, and the citizens to be able to think for themselves. And, and to meet science and and, and fiction and non-fiction and all these kind of things. Um, and I'm extremely happy about this this finding because to me, the the, the world that we are living in is not it's, it's different than from the Enlightenment area. But in a world with fake news, misinformation, parallel universes, social media algorithms creating you know parallel universes, I, I think. An institution that is credible and brings perspective to life is extremely important. Then the public library for citizens in Denmark is a place where citizens experience togetherness and community. It could be either be alone or with the others and where they experience that materials and facilities are a common property without a financial barrier. I'm very happy about this and I always trusted that the public libraries was a place that were fostering stronger communities and belonging. So I'm glad that 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 is a primary finding, but it was kind of new to me that the very fact that we have shared public places in communities like libraries are, are fostering this togetherness. It's the logic is that it's not the library's books. It's not the municipalities, you know, books or buildings, it's our books, it's our buildings, it's our library workers, it's something that we share and something that we take care of together. And 85% of the parents in the study says that it's important for, the, for them that their children are growing up a society where there are institutions and shared places like libraries that we care about and take care of as a community. It's something that we share, and that shareness, that that togetherness, are fostering stronger communities in itself. So that, that was kind of new for me that 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 there was this mechanism in 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 the, in the society. 
Then the public library is a source of inspiration. It stimulates imagination and it helps motivate citizens to try out new things. And it shouldn't be understand the way that uh, you learn everything at the library because you don't do that. You could go at a talk about fishing and you could be inspired and taking home some book to carry out fishing. You couldn't, that could be a guy talking about fishing and you're thinking, wow, I want to try out fishing and go it, do it with my son. So we have some shared activity together. You borrow some book, you, maybe you meet somebody at the program that are, are fisher themselves and it's more experience, which give you some advice on that. And then you move on. So the library inspires. It doesn't necessarily learn people everything and have an institution and communities that inspires us to want to learn new things, to take out new things, is to me extremely important. And then two extra things from the primary findings. This is going across almost everything in the study concerning the staff. The, the, the help from meeting with, with staff at public libraries and getting help from, from staff at public libraries is gives to citizens kind of a it's kind of a relational point to them of, of reference. It's kind of the, a human face of the library. It, it makes the, the library less of an institution and more of a people that can, a person that can help you. Uh, and this is most significant in the smaller branch library of the study uh, to, to our, our, our kind of guessing. We can't see it clearly in the data, but, 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 but a smaller branch library in Denmark, you, you mainly have the same staff on duty than in the bigger libraries, where there's many staff on duty on some kind of role. And they serve as a, a, a relational point in the smaller communities. It, it doesn't mean that you necessarily, you know, go out and drink coffee or a beer with, with, with the librarian or the library staff, but it means that you, 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 you know each other on, a, on, on, on some level and you, you see a familiar face that can help you with something and maybe the library worker knows your reading, reading habits and, and take aside some books for you. And, and that has value for people that there's somebody in the, it's kind of like small grocery stores and something like that. You might not know the person working there, but you, you're not and you, you, you get connected in, in that smaller community. It brings something together. And then very importantly, uh, it, it's, it's significant for, for the citizens in Denmark that you can get help from, from staff at libraries and not only help with everything, but it's significant that you can help with, you know, reading tips, literature, uh, and subjects findings. Some of the absolutely core functions of a library, which makes it extremely important that we have staff, well-qualified staff on duty. So I'm, I'm happy that they are exactly pointing at that. They're also getting help from a, a lot of different things, but, but they are expressing it, that it has some significant impact. On, on both on perspective uh, that, that, that they can get help with, with literature and, and subject findings. And then also across everything, it, it means something to the people in Denmark that the public library is a place where you can trust what you see and what you hear. And I've, I find trust to be in every you know, aspect of life an extremely valuable uh, capital. If you could say it that way, it's uh, if you don't trust anything, if you don't trust what is behind the door, then you don't walk into the door. If you don't trust the person you are talking to, then you won't take the opinions uh, or, or whatever that is going on. You won't take it into account. Maybe you won't even talk to the person. So, so being connected with trust and credibility for me, it comes with a huge responsibility for, for public libraries in Denmark, but it's also something that we can really build on as, as an as a, a, a institution of welfare. So we, we, did the, we did the study and we did the report, we translated it into English. For us, that was only step one, uh, because reports has only a certain life. Uh, it, we all know studies that was some years ago and then we might still remember it, but it's not, that comes new studies and different things. And, and we realized that, of course, it will be the same with this study. And um, in, at, at some time, it will be the impact study from Roskilde, and that's just that. And that's fine, because that is, that is the ecosystem of studies and stuff like that. But we actually wanted to, you know, change the language. 
that was the ambition. And we thought to ourselves from the beginning, it's not enough with the study, it's not enough with the report that we put out. So I want to talk a little bit about the next step that we have been taking in this. The, the first step is that we, you know, we put out everything that we could about the method and the design that we did uh, and, and created a guide to use of the impact compass in, in practical level uh, and, and, and on, on different perspectives. Um, I, I really can't say how helpful it is, but we tried our best to make it adaptable for, 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 for all, you know, for, for all library systems and different, you know, institutions of culture to actually use in different settings. And now our study has some volume, but our ambition was that you could take this method and make it your own in your own context and actually get insight by only talking to 10 people, 15 people, 20 people on, on, a, on, a, on a subject that you want to explore. Our ambition was also to create some criti critical as, as perspective on how we as library professionals are talking about the things that we do. Do we uh, do we get happy when we get sold out programs? Is that is that the, the key point of a of a of a of a of a program? Or do we get happy when we get high lending numbers? Is is that our job to get high lending numbers? Or could, could we also also could we could we create a conversation that also goes on when we have you know collection management? Do, what do we want that collection management to do? Is it connected to our mission and vision? Can we talk about the impact that that collection should do in our society? So we wanted to to give something to that conversation, and not only in inside the libraries, but also when we talk to decision makers and politicians. Because in, at the end of the day, at least in Denmark, those are the guys and girls that are setting the scene for us in the future. So it's extremely important that they are not only you know interested in in um, in lending numbers and foot traffic. So we released that also translated into English. Then we have been talking a lot about this. <laughs> uh, and, and there's different arenas where you can talk about it. <clears throat> uh, there's a political arena. And that is um, that has kind of been kind of a mind blowing experience to taking this language and study into a political arena in, in different aspects of, of Denmark. Uh, I, I've been talking to various colleagues that has tried it out and more or less with the same results. My politicians in Roskilde, are, they like their libraries. They find libraries to be important. But when we talk about it on a political level, in a political room, it is about, it often is about the use of libraries and the volume of that. How many libraries do we got? Do we need a new library or should we close a library? Do we need a bookmobile? How many how many people are coming into to our room? How did it go about, about our lending numbers when we were in lockdown and so on? They like our libraries, find them important, but the conversation is very, hands-on on the things that we can see and measure. When, when I took this study into the room, it created a totally different conversation, which went about what problems in vascular municipality could the library be the answer of. They were talking about young people experience loneliness and how the library as a place fostering community as an impact could be a part of the answer when we as a political system worked with young people facing loneliness and th that was new and that is to me an extremely important conversation because we don't have libraries for themselves libraries to me are in this world to create a positive difference they are here to solve problems and to be a catalysator to to bring out ambitions to life and we can't lift that as a discussion and on a concrete level when we are only looking at statistics it's not possible. I can't see how it's possible. We need some. We need a, a new language and, and a different arena to talk about it. And and many of my colleagues has has brought on you know same experience when they have taken out this study to to their politicians. So to me, this is very much also a a tool for a political conversation uh, when you want our politicians to actually you never know you know what they want to say or their opinion. But, but what I'm interested in at first hand is to make a scene, an arena where they talk about the right things. And it's not because it's wrong to talk about lending numbers. That is totally perfect. But it's just a poor conversation politically if it, that's the only conversation. 
Then I talk a lot, we talk a lot to library and cultural professionals, and that is both because I think if you have something interesting at, at, at in mind, then sharing is caring, you need to share it. But also because I hope that a lot of people around the world will ad adapt some of this logic, maybe not take on the full design and the method, uh, but take some parts of it, and get inspired and do the new new, new new investigations. And to my opinion, it's it's the amount of investigation in Denmark and across the world that hopefully at some point will create a new language and understanding of, of maybe not a new truth, but a new language and understanding of the impact of public libraries. Then the workplace is extremely significant. How do we talk about what we do in, in the workplace as a library? A, a common example from my own library is that we have a program and I meet somebody who has been doing the program the day after and I ask, how did it go? And the person says, it was great, Christian. We had 50 people coming. It was a sold out program. Or he or she could say, ah, I don't know. It wasn't that good. There was only 15 people. So we were a bit disappointed about that. Maybe it was something about the marketing about it or something like that. And then, okay, hmm, then we go on. But do we actually know if the 50 people that we are so happy about had a good experience? Do we actually know if we created the impact that we wanted with the program to these 50 people? Or maybe only 15 people came and five of those got, you know, their life changed, just to put it up there. So we need to move a, a little bit. We need to, we want to, you know, expand that conversation about what we do at the workplace. And at the end of the day, library workers, library leaders are also great ambassadors of the impact of libraries. So it's important that we can have these conversations. And then, of course, there's the media. We have been in the radio and national newspapers and all these kind of things. And that is also because we wanted to actually reach out to actually citizens and give some reflection on what, 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 what is the impact of a public level. So my last point of this talk is that to change the language of the value and the impact of a public libraries always need to be in the context of society. Impact is not necessarily interesting in itself this report is not necessarily interesting in itself. It's only become interesting and relevant when we put it in context of society. It could be locally, it could be nationally, it could be globally. If we are talking about uh, an increasing degree of mental health issue, loneliness among citizens, we now have the, the citizens' word that the public library is a place that are fostering stronger communities and togetherness. So the right question there is, how can we use that insight on impact to, 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 to fight loneliness and among different groups of citizens? If we are talking about fake news, misinformation, social media algorithms, and so on, as being a democratic problem for societies, you know, there's not only one truth, there's many truths, and people just lie, you know, it's, it's weird. It's, it hasn't been that way, in, you know, before. It's, something is changing in, in the way we talk to each other. We now have the citizens in Denmark's word that the public library as an institution is a place that are bringing perspective to people's lives. How can we use that if we think that fake news is a problem? So, so context is, is key for me when we, when we work with, with impact. Um, feel free to contact me anytime if you have following question after this today and thank you for listening. I will unshare my screen now. Thank you, thank Christian. You, Christian. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, well, questions. Does anybody have a... Well, I see a question from Marjolein in the chat. I will leave it. Uh, Christian from Marjolein, how did you organize this arena for a new impact conversation in your library? Did you set up specific meetings? Did you involve staff in setting up the study? That is a excellent question. Uh, yes, we started it out with a, uh, we are 115 people all in all and uh, some less in the, the public library part of, of our our business. So we set up a, a big meeting in the beginning where we talked about the, the ambition, like I've been talking to, to you today and the main findings. And then we took that discussion into a different room where we looked at our workplace, 
how, how what does that mean to to us and how how do we actually talk about uh, the impact of libraries and the impact of the work we are doing and it was it was one of the best meetings i i have been having internally you know also because we have a lot of people working in in the transaction of you know core library business they are moving books from one place to another place suddenly they can see their work affected in in the, the work of collection and what it actually brought to people so they were you know totally excited about going into discussion about what does my work actually mean in the in the end when when people are actually facing a collection or something like that um and then we then it's to my opinion it's always nice to have a great conversation but to actually kind of change a culture uh, mindset you need to you often need something extra so we created a set of questions from from the impact compass the impact compass for some people can be a bit complex to use in everyday life to our experience so so we we wanted to take the good things and important things from the impact compass and the logic and sweep it into some critical questions that we are asking ourselves before we do something and after we do something not every time but but often when we do a new program, we are, we, are, we, are, we are using those questions and the impact compass, if it's big enough, to actually say, OK, we have this idea for a new program. What kind of impact do we want it to give and to what kind of citizens? How do we, how do we work with that impact doing that program and the development of it? And how do we you know, actually track afterwards if it had the you know, necessary impact? So we are right there, we are going from the normal way to track impact the numbers of people coming to the program to actually saying this is this program i really want i really want people to be critical and enlightened about it or this program is about shared food i want to you know foster stronger communities with these people over here in Roskilde that that we i guess are, are kind of facing some weakness or whatever it be. so so and then we are kind of you know massaging that into our work way of, of doing things we have some consultants on that are, are you know helping the the, the process uh, normal library workers are kind of busy people they are using a lot of time daily time on on collection management and on facing citizens so so we 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 are you know begging this up with with having some people helping uh, the process uh, and 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 people are you know, I don't need my people to wake up every morning and just be on fire on, on, on the impact of libraries, you know. But I think it's important that we are at some points when we do new stuff on also on a regular basis, have a discussion about why we do things and what kind of value or impact and effect we want it to bring into the things we do. If you are uncritical about that, it could be everything, you know. So, so, so that is the way we had tried it to, to do it. Are, are working on it in, in these months and days. And I'm, I'm getting, we are getting, we have a problem with business. And when you are busy, it, 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 it can be hard to take in new ways of doing things. So we're trying to work around that. But, but I'm, I'm, I, I, there's no, I, I, people, people like to talk about the impact and the value of libraries. They like to. They like to reflect on why we do things. They're not that trained in it, which I think is a problem, but we're trying to solve it now. But they are they are happy to be along this 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 boat trip with us on on, on actually being more more more, more critical on, on the things that we do. Thank you. It, it's, the, the questions are not translated into English, but I'm I because I, I feel some interest in actually that so we might get that translated at some point too. Arjen also has a question. Uh, how did you get the information about the needs of your community? Did you use data and or was there a conversation with the community? So how did you get the information about the needs of your community? Um, data or on another? It's a, if we talk about, if we talk about the needs of the community of Ruskid, the municipality, that is a shared picture of a lot of different things. 
there's a political aspect. Um, it, in Denmark and in Roskilde, it's the politicians that kind of frames the direction of what we are doing. On a practical level, it's often me or us that comes with, you know, something. Reading, uh, joy of reading is important and can work in that. And then we have a discussion about it and then they decide it. So there is a polit politician room that, that is kind of important for us. Uh, then there is, um, we are part of a municipality, and I think it's very important that you, as a library, understands that you are a part of that and connects with the different parts of the government in that municipality. So we have been talking a lot to, you know, the different institution within the municipality that works with, for instance, young people. Uh, we have, you know, inside data on young people that are, not moving on from from school and into something new. They are not going on to a new. They are not going on to something work. They are not going on to some uh, education. They are going into nothing, and doing nothing is not that healthy for young people in Roskilde municipality. So what we see with these people is that they often go into abuse of different kind, uh, crime. And all these kind of things. So that is a huge issue in Roskilde municipality. How can the library, and that is that is really, really data driven. We actually have the numbers. We almost have the names on these people. You know, so how can the libraries help with with, with that uh, with that problem on, on different kind of programs, fostering stronger communities, the learning aspect of the public library, making sure that people get connected, all these kind of things. And we cannot solve that problem at, as alone as library, but we can solve it together with others. So that was just one example, but that is basically the way that we are working with, 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 the, with, with data and statistics in the in direction if, in, in case of, of looking at the needs and the problems that, that we can where we can be a part of the, the solution. And then, of course, on, on top of that, there's a lot of demographic um, demographic um, data. For many years, uh, some years ago, there was a lot of refugees in, um, in Ruskin municipality, so we worked a lot with the integration uh, for what we could do in, in that part. Um, but at the moment, it's a very low number because it's, it's a national trend that we take in lesser and lesser um, refugees in, in Denmark. So we can see that number is falling. So that is also affecting our, our, our effort into that. Uh, we can see that parts of Roskilde are getting more and more popular, getting more and more people there. Uh, some parts of, of the cities are growing kind of radically. And, and if we don't have a library there, then we are looking into how can we how can we be there without having a building? How can we use other people's buildings and all these kind of things? So that is the, just some examples of how we are working with looking into partnerships with others and and the data and statistics and the overall vision, political and for the municipality, where we can you know create value. And then of course we have you know you know our own professionals' beliefs in what should library be in Roskilde municipality. So that is, the, you know, the sheer amount of of, of that uh, looking into that. I hope it makes sense in, in this way. Thank you. Does anybody else have a question for Christian? There are still some questions in the chat also, uh, Vanya. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't see those. Uh... I can see that, yeah. For example, your uh, line would like to know, did you find surprising results where you saw a higher or lower impact than expected? And what did you do with that? Um, we saw that uh, the impact of programs was extremely high all over the impact compass, which was actually a bit surprising for us. I mean, I mean, we, we, I don't think we sat and talked that it would be lesser, but, but it was significant that that the, the um, that that the programs of public libraries in, in Denmark to citizens had that great impact on so many different areas, so we have taken that insight and and been giving some thought on our own programs uh, on, on on different kind of levels in in Roskilde municipality. I can't talk for other library systems in Denmark. We also need to remember that it's a national survey, so it might not necessarily reflect 
the reality of Roskilde the municipality. Um, but but we took that into account and 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 also very much connected that with okay. We we now are assured that our programs makes a different in different ways. But we need more insight on how and why and what we want with it. So that is why we are very much on our programs are using you know the adapted question from the impact compass when we create new 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 programs uh, and workshops and so on and and when we want to find out the the actual impact of of, of those those programs so that that is the the way we we went about it and then i must just say that the collection of the public library which i, I don't know how it is in holland but in, in denmark somebody, sometimes it's something we not we, we don't talk that much about on a management level it's it's a centralized thing that you know some millions in the municipality that just go books on shelves electronic resources uh, a system around that but it, it holds quite a significant impact to citizens and it's something that they they all use when they go to libraries almost everybody use the collection and if you look at it the collection the free and equal access to to resources to cultural activity to knowledge combined with trust and credibility is something that really uh, separates us from other institutions of culture. In Denmark, you have cultural houses, citizens' houses, all these kind of things that is important, working with communities and, and shared experiences and so on. What really are significant with the public library is the collection and, and, and great staff connected with that collection. So, uh, so we, have, we have started uh, being better at working on a professional level with our collection. Uh, making stronger connection between our collection and management collection management work and the things we are doing, connecting it with the programs, connecting it with the room, being being better at putting it out there, and also be more critical at the things that we are buying and 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 why we are buying them and and to what kind of need we are buying them. It shouldn't just be lists with reservations, you know, and then some guy or girl are just you know, buying those things. It should be something that matters. And we can also have a conversation. We have so many books and so many titles, so it's hard. We don't go into specific, but on an overall level, I think it's extremely important that library management are aware of what collection actually means and that it's not just, you know, a, a list of titles where we just buy things, but actually have conversation about what should what should our collection policy brings as an, an impact level, right? So I would say on programs, on on collection, and also on guidance, where we where we uh, it had given some some food for thoughts on 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 creating our both both our practice, but also our conversation about about the way we do things in Roskilde. Okay, I also have a proposal from Marjan. Uh, well, she understands Danish, so she could translate your questions, Christian, for you. Okay, so great. maybe you should contact each other uh, <laughs> after this meeting. And uh, Lauri uh, has a question. Do you know of any other libraries that worked with the instrument? What was or is their experience? So are there other libraries that work with the uh, Impact Compass and what is their experience? There's a... There's a at, at the moment, at this, in Sweden and in Denmark, I know of a number of libraries. In, in, the, in the northern part of Sweden, it's almost become like the thing that you do when you, when you work with, with, with impact. And, and in Denmark, a number of libraries has not been taking the method one-to-one -one and making the same in the municipality, but many has taken on looking at specific things in the municipality in a local context. In Holstebro, which is in Jutland, I know that they are currently working on the collaboration they have with um, clubs, not, you know, not discotheques and stuff like that, but clubs where young people go after school, before they go home. I don't know what the right term is. And they have a lot of collaboration with reaching out to, to the, the, the young pupils and, 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 and kids that go, go to those places between school and between home. Uh, and so they're using using the method and the design to look at the impact of that work. And, um, and somebody is looking strictly on the digital library and so on. So, so there's a number of, uh, of, of libraries which are at the moment carrying out specific surveys uh, and investigations. And then there's a lot of libraries which are using you know, 
this work to create a more critical conversation uh, internally at the workplace and the library, but also with the politicians about what libraries should do in the municipality. Okay. Well, thank you, Christian. Well, it's almost half past 11. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we've learned a lot from you. So thank you for that. If you could stay in the meeting, then we can chat uh, still a bit if you have time with Jessica uh, uh, and myself. I want sure. to thank, thank everybody for their uh, participation today. Well, you also, Christian, uh, well, it's also recorded this meeting, so you can see it through our online community uh, on beep to beep And also, Christian, his uh, well, contact details are there, so if you have more questions, then uh, you can ask him or send uh, yes or me an uh, email or a chat uh, through beep to beep and uh, we will help you with that. So thank you, everybody, and have a nice uh, day. Is Marjolein over? Oh, she already is uh, eruit, denk ik. Marjan yeah. is nog wat aan het typen, maar die is eruit. En Theo zit er alleen nog in. I see a lot of Danish in the chat. Uh, yeah. Chris. A lot of Danish. Uh, Mange tak, Diel Hensen. <laughs> Very inspiring. Thanks a lot. Thanks You're welcome. <laughs> um, well, Christian, what was your experience? <laughs> you, know, it's, it, it, some, you can always, I mean, it's, I, I can't see anybody because I'm no. just looking at a screen <laughs> and my slides. So it's very differently from being a, in a physical room. But it was uh, taking from the questions, there were some really great and, and also hands on practical questions, which, which is always extremely nice to have a conversation from that. So it was a nice